everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we'll be going into topic 8, chemical equilibrium. And in this topic, we have two subtopics, which is 8.1, dynamic equilibrium, and also 8.2, your equilibrium constant. And for today's video, we'll focus on 8.1, dynamic equilibrium. We have three learning outcomes that we are going to look into. First and foremost, we are going to look at what is actually reversible reaction. We will also look into what is dynamic equilibrium system. And last but not least, we will look into the curve for reversible reaction. Before that, what is actually chemical reaction? Chemical reaction is when the concentration of the reactant decreases and the concentration of the product increase with the time. So the chemical reaction happens because your reactant is converted to become product. That is what your chemical reaction stands for. And we have two types of chemical reaction. They are irreversible reaction and also reversible reaction. So we are going to look into what is actually irreversible reaction and what is actually reversible reaction. Let's look into what is actually irreversible reaction. Irreversible reaction stands for all the reactants are converted into product. So all your reactants must turn into product. In the other words, your reactant at the end must be zero or finish. The reaction will be only in one direction until all the reactant is finished. In the other words, you will only have forward reaction. So the reaction is only one way. There is no two way. And the equation that you will normally come across will be using single headed arrow where all your reactant must become your product. At the end of the reaction, your reactant must finish and all your product will be formed. And that is your irreversible reaction. The curve of concentration versus time is as given. So you can see that you have your reactant. Your reactant, when the time is zero, your reactant is very high. So when the reaction started, your reactant will decrease until your reactant finish. And your product from the beginning will be zero because there's no product form yet at the beginning. But when the reaction started, your product form at the end. So you can see over here that your reactant turns to zero at the end of the reaction because all your reactant must convert into product. And that is what we mean by irreversible reaction. And the curve of rate of reaction versus time is as given. The rate of reaction is inversely proportional with the time. In the other words, the rate of reaction will decrease along the time. Next, what is reversible reaction? What makes reversible reaction different? Reversible reaction means not all reactants are converted into product. There will still be reactant remain at the end of the reaction. So your reactant will not finish. Second, the reaction can proceed to both forward and reverse reaction means that your reaction will be in a double-headed arrow where your reaction can change the reactant to product and also changing the product to become the reactant. What do we mean by this? Means that the reactant can change to the product and the product also can change to the reactant. So you have a two-way reaction over here making it reversible. It can go back to your reactant when your reactant can become the product. And that is what we mean by reversible reaction. And that is the reason why your reactant will not finish. The example of the curve that I can show you when the concentration versus time is something like this. You can see over here, you have your reactant given, where in this reactant, the reactant will not become zero. It will not become zero because it's a reversible reaction where the product can also change back to the reactant. But the concentration of the reactant will also decrease along the time because some of the reactant will be converted to the product. That's why you can see the product started at the zero, the product started at the zero, and the amount of product will increase 
when the amount of the reactant decreases, but it will not touching the x axis and become zero. Well, we have another graph. The graph over here is rate of reaction versus time. Other than these two curves, we can have more curve for reversible reaction. Let's look into that. The another type of curve that we can have for reversible reaction is when the concentration again versus time. You can see that your reactant decrease and your product increase along the way. By that in mind, the reactant cannot touch the zero. The second type of curve is still the concentration versus time. And you realize that your reactant again decrease and your product again increase. But the curve or the rate of the reaction is slightly different. As long as your reactant is decreasing and your product is increasing and also your reactant is not reaching zero, that is your reversible reaction curve. Last but not least, we have another type of curve where you have your concentration versus time also. And you realize that again, your reactant is decreasing. Your reactant is decreased from a higher value to a lower value because some of the reactant is now converted to become product. That's why product starting from zero and product increase along the way when the reactant decreased. The condition is still the same where the reactant cannot become zero, okay? Because it's a reversible reaction where the reaction can be forward and also the reaction can be backward. Therefore, you will have reactant left at the end of the reaction. So in this curve, in all of this curve, there is still one more thing that we are going to look at is the T equilibrium. So what is actually mean by this? Your T at equilibrium is the time achieved chemical equilibrium. In the other words, this is the time that you achieve chemical equilibrium. So this is what you call chemical equilibrium. All right. All this is your chemical equilibrium. So the question over here is, how do I know where is my chemical equilibrium? Quite simple. Your chemical equilibrium will be achieved when your curve for the product and the curve for the reactant start to go flat. You can see that. In the first curve, the chemical equilibrium is when the product and the reactant curve started to flat. Same thing over here. When your reactant and your product started to go flat, that is where your chemical equilibrium. Same thing over here. Your reactant is now started to flat. Your product is now started to flat. So that is your chemical equilibrium achieved. Why your chemical equilibrium achieved when the curve started to be flat? Your curve started to be flat because the concentration of the product and the concentration of the reactant is no longer changing. So the concentration of the product and the concentration of the reactant right now remain constant. So why the product and reactant will become constant? Don't worry, we'll look into what is actually chemical equilibrium. So what is actually chemical equilibrium? The chemical equilibrium will be achieved when the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse reaction is equal. So the rate of the forward is moving from the left to the right and the rate of the reverse is moving from the right to the left. So the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse right now is the same. Therefore, the reactant and the product concentration will remain constant at this time. Constant, in the other words, is not changing. The concentration of the reactant and the product will be not changing at this time. Remember in the curve just now, when the graph is flat, that is your chemical equilibrium because the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse reaction is equal. Therefore, the concentration of the reactant and product are not changing. Last but not least, the equilibrium will only occur in a closed system. Closed system means no reactant or product is added. So there will be no changes into the system. No reactant or product is added in the middle of the reaction. That is among the condition to achieve chemical equilibrium. I have a very simple example to show you what you mean by rate of forward and rate of the reverse reaction is equal. 
So look at the N over here. So what happened over here is, so this N down here is going to take something from the reactant and change to a product. The N at the top is going to take something from the product to become the reactant. So you have your reversible reaction over here. And why the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the re reverse reaction is equal? Look at how they move. All right, look at how the N is moving. So the N will be taking something from the reactant to become product. And another N up here will be taking something from the product to become reactant. Look at it. So they are taking something from the reactant to the product. And this N is taking something from the product to the reactant. So you can see that the rate of they moving are the same. So that is what we mean by the rate are equal. When the rate of the reaction is equal, you realize that the amount of reactant and the amount of product is not changing. It will be constant at all the time. Why? Because when this N, all right, at the bottom, taking one reactant, change to the product, the N at the top taking something from the product to become the reactant. So it will be moving equally. Therefore, there will be no changes. Bear that in mind, there will be no changes. But does the reaction stop? No, the reaction doesn't stop. The reaction is ongoing. The reaction doesn't stop. But there is no changes that we can observe because we achieved chemical equilibrium already. So when you achieve chemical equilibrium, the reaction doesn't stop. The reaction is still keep going. But there is no changes that you can see because the concentration of the reactant and product remain constant. The reason is because the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction are now equal. And that is what we mean by chemical equilibrium. That is the basic concept about what is chemical equilibrium. And bear that in mind, you can only achieve chemical equilibrium in a reversible reaction like this. If it is an irreversible reaction, there will be no chemical equilibrium because all the product will become reacted. So by that in mind, chemical equilibrium, you must have a forward and a reverse reaction. And to achieve equilibrium, you must fulfill these three requirements. Okay? And a kind reminder over here, again, when you already achieve chemical equilibrium, your reaction doesn't stop. Your reaction is still ongoing. It just, we cannot observe the changes. There will be no changes observed. Doesn't mean that your reaction stopped. The reaction is still going, but the concentration of the product and the concentration of the reactant remain unchanged. Remember that. And that is all about your chemical equilibrium, the basic knowledge of what is chemical equilibrium. I hope this video helps you to understand what is actually chemical equilibrium. If it does, do give me a like for this video. If it doesn't, drop me a comment down there and I will try to help you to understand more about chemical equilibrium. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. And thank you for watching.